Welcome back to Ingolston. Uh, I'm Hamish Logan, and as I said earlier on when I was speaking to Annette and Elliot about the uh, Heavy Horse uh, Championship, we're still here at the side of the main ring where the Grand Parade is happening. It's a big, big pinnacle of uh, the Royal Highland Show, which a lot of people come to actually see all the livestock being paraded around the main ring. The grandstand is packed on the other side of the, uh, the main ring, and on this side of the main ring where we are, there also the crowds are gathering just to see what is actually happening here. So I'll let the camera tell us to spat, pa, pan round to see what's actually happening here in the main ring. But as you can see, all the uh, livestock have come out, including all the cattle. Some of them have got their calves with them, with them, including the one just in front of us here. Um, and all the different breeds, all the different breeds have come out. So we've got some of the Belted Galloways, the Highland cattle are here, the British Shireleys are here. Reducing replacement costs. Walking past us, just in front of us here, are the British Limousin. And as you can see, these are uh, very, very big animals. And uh, the bull there, right in front of you, was the champion of champion. This section was sponsored by Aberdeenshire Highland Beef and was judged by Donald McNaughton. Their champion. And as there's so many of them coming into the ring, they have to wind back and forward throughout the main ring to fit them all in at the same time. So this iconic, instantly recognisable breed of cattle, one of the most iconic in the world, with their long horns and hairy coats, originating in the Highlands and West Niles of Scotland, using centuries of survival instinct has resulted in an economical We've got the British Blue walking past us right in front of us here. Forage into high quality beef. Hardy, excellent, productive mothers mean that the Highland cattle breed is utilized in the commercial beef world. Highland cattle were used in the foundation of the Ling breed. Getting all these animals isn't in, into the main the ring weather. here is a bit and of a summer, logistical nightmare um, as some of the uh, livestock crosses have to be shut the around the show ring to allow them to get in cool. over the overpasses. However, once they get into the main ring, it's an absolute sight to see them here. And occasionally done. It was in the days of Queen Victoria, the breed was almost all black, but Queen Victoria decided that it was much better if they were... Um, she favoured the red colour, so that became the fashion. Following the Highlanders, we have the Hereford. This section was sponsored by Harbro, and the judge was William McLaren. The champion was Spartan One Typhoon from SC and GL Hartwright. The Hereford is another of the older breeds originating in this country, originating in the county of Hereford and the Welsh border counties. The red-bodied, white-faced breed, originally horned, but now in many cases polled, is one of the world's most recognized breeds of cattle, being found all around the globe. There are nine million... So now the commercial cattle have gone Uruguay. past. We've now got the uh, dairy cattle now walking the breed towards us. As the natural producer of quality beef, First we've got the Ayrshire Dairy Champion. I can see Dave Laurie walking with the Supreme Champion of, of Dairy Cow there. Worldwide. Easy carving, docile. He's from Fife, from a dairy farm. make this breed an economical one to keep. Branded Hereford beef can be found in selected Waitrose stores. Following the Hereford, in the middle of the ring now, we have the Charolais. Charolais, this section was sponsored by the Fallonish Farm and was judged by Chris Curry. And as the parade's happening here in the main Charolais ring, the sun's starting to come out. European Hopefully it stays here for the rest of the afternoon so all the, the crowds Charolais can enjoy watching in and watching the show in the, the sunshine. The There's plenty to hear, see here. And if government. you've not been able to visit here uh, uh, this year for the 200th anniversary of the Royal the Highland Show, then the make sure you get your tickets as I think the early bird tickets come on sale later on this afternoon as the show finishes for the 2023 show. 
beef industry. It's an amazing show to come and visit, and if you've not been able to come and visit, then I would re very much recommend coming to see all the amazing sites here at Ingolston. There's some of the young handlers here going around the main ring as well with their sort of their champions that they've won their classes in. Adding muscle and good confirmation. There are some old genetics in the breed that have been brought in from Canada. Following the Simmental, sorry, following the Charolais, we have the Simmental. Judged by Joe Wilson. The Simmental is a, was another European breed that has had much influence in the UK. It's an amazing sight here to see them all walking around, all the white coats this walking around, all the stockmen and stockwomen walking around in their white jackets, showing these amazing animals off to all the public that are here watching them on the side of the main ring. Many Simmentals today, back in Bavaria, if you haven't been able to watch some of all the coverage we've been showing here, then make sure you catch up with it all online on the Royal Highland Show website. The Royal Highland Show TV has been running as well throughout the last few days, and you can watch it all online. Colour from light sandy through to dark red with a white head. Again, whole genetics have been introduced from North America. Following the Simmental, we have a red breed of cattle. These are the Limousins. This section was sponsored by Norbrook of Carlisle and was judged by Mike Massey. Their champion was from A.W. Jenkinson Farms Harbo Proctors. The Limousin is one of the most numerous breeds of cattle in the UK. This horned, red, sometimes black breed of cattle were imported from the Limoges area in France during the 1970s. Their high killing out percentages has built the breed's reputation as the carcass breed with their ability to produce lower amounts of bone and fat than some other breeds, along with calving ease and feed efficiency, has led the Limousin's current dominance in the UK beef industry. Primarily, they were brought in and used as a sire in the crossbred, in the dairy sec sector, uh, to produce crossbred commercial cattle. With the success in that dairy industry, they were then became heavily used within the beef suckler herd. Following the limousines, we have the blondes, the British blonde, judged by David Knight. Their champion was Brownhill Netter from Th Thor Atkinson. The Blonde Aquitaine, as it was when it came into this country, is a horned, wheaten-coloured breed of cattle from Europe. Imported during the 1970s, the Blonde is the result of the amalgamation of three local breeds of cattle in the south of France in the foothills of the Pyrenees. The Garonnet, the Cursey, and the Blonde de Pyrenees. Like the Limousin before them, the Blonde produces small calves with high growth rates, lean carcasses with high killing out percentages, and is regarded as a terminal sire. Following the Blondes, we have the British Blue. The British Blue was judged by Mark Hartley. The blue, British Blue was one of the later European breeds to be introduced to the UK. It came in the 1980s. These cattle were imported from Belgium and were known as Belgian Blues. 
They were very heavily muscled, designed to increase meat yield when crossed over the beef yield in dairy cattle. As you will see, the cattle following Seems to be a bit of a traffic the jam going on here in the main ring. But as they wind back and forward and some of them leave the main ring, they'll be heading back down to the cattle lines. The, the cattle uh, shed sits down the north side of the, um, of the showground near the runway. Of lean red meat. And the cattle have been here for the last uh, four days, in fact, five days, because they probably come in here on Wednesday, because the majority the of the judging happens and starts at eight o'clock on the Thursday morning of the show. So blue. they've probably been here for five days. So they're probably looking forward to getting back to the farm directly back or some to beef short horns rest. Imported from England into Belgium in 19, 1850 to improve the native Arden cattle. Following the blondes, we have the Celeres. The Celeres were judged by Glenn Welsh. Their champion was Caneburn Precious from Edison Trading Limited. The Celere cattle were imported from the Massif Centrale in France where they are milked for cheese production. In the UK, they are a maternal breed with wide pelvises, resulting in very easy calving cows. These horned, dark red cattle produce small calves that grow fast into high killing out percent carcasses. They have high growth rates and are very, uh, and can be a, regarded as a dual purpose breed producing uh, both beef and milk. They are very economical to keep. Most are red. There are some black genetics imported from North America, along with some polled genetics from North America. Following the, those red uh, Celeres, we have some commercial cattle. Now these commercial cattle had their own section, their champion was uh, 50 Shades of Grey from JCB Commercials. And this section was judged by Wilson Peters. The commercial cattle As we heard from uh, Annette and Elliot earlier on when we were speaking to them on the uh, Clydesdale Championship, they have gone to a number of other uh, local shows around the uh, country. So if you're not able to visit the Royal Highland Show, then you'll be able to go to the Haddington Show or Peebles um, and you'll be able to come around and see um, them uh, in your local show and check out what's actually happening on a smaller scale, but also very apt. Uh, commercial cattle, we have the dairy cattle. And our parade here is... Uh, so this is uh, the conclusion is of the parade here in the main ring. And uh, we are going to go and see um, some more action on the, uh, on the showground here. Slightly different action. We're actually going to go and see some gunging happening, some live gunging here at Engleston. So tune in and make sure you keep up to date on the social media to see us do that live later on in the afternoon. We'll see you very soon.